Hello, this is our podcast for a part appreciation class. Me, Azim John Doniorov, and Amira Kadirova. Hello, hello, the audience, and Azim John. Uh, yeah, hello, Amira, and you know, uh, during this course, we learned a lot of concepts, a lot of different movements in art, but the one that really caught my attention was abstract art the which was which developed during modernism era i mean yeah what do you think of abstract art what are your thoughts on this so as i know abstract art is does not depict any uh, objects that related to the real world instead it depicts uh, the something like subjects or shapes colors that seems unnatural and doesn't uh, have any kind of meaning i think so as i know one of the representative of the abstract art that also uh, bring some developments to this kind of direction uh, is the kandinsky vasily kandinsky is a russian painter and the art theorist who credited with being of one of the founders of abstract art so Throughout his career, Kandinsky was known for his belief in the spiritual power of art and his work often reflected the belief. So he was born on the December 16th in 1866 in Moscow, Russia and grew up in a well-to-do family. So the family always supported his interest in uh, art and helped him to develop his skills. And also Kandinsky studied law and economics at the University of Moscow and took the art classes aside. After he graduated, he possessed his passion of art in Germany and moved to Munich, I think. And as you know, what kind of art did you know that he painted so far? I mean, there are lots of arts, the paintings he created so far, the composition eight, composition seven, mm, and delicate tension and so on. There are a bunch of them that are popular all around the world. But before moving to the topic of his paintings, I would like to talk about the background information. I mean, it would be really great to talk about how come we have this abstract art in the first place. Because, uh, you know, uh, the the psychoanalysis of uh, Sigmund Freud, Sigmund Freud in English, yes, it's Sigmund Freud, well, sorry for my Russian. So Sigmund Freud and his work gave a push to, it motivated abstract art because the very idea of abstract art is all about uh, going deep into meaning, going deep into human psyche, key and analyzing the subconscious of the humans i mean in this case we can see that the artists like artists such as vasily kandinsky made a great job as you mentioned he is one of the founding fathers of the abstract art also he's russian and the very interesting thing is that the great russian revolution also played a huge role in his career and what do you think of these russian revolution and stuff russian revolution um i think it took place in 1917s really um inspires the vasily kandinsky uh, to create his masterpieces just to sending a message about the this kind of revolution that um, also can be described as pain, grief, a lot of losses, the, uh, changing the political systems and other stuff. So uh, Kandinsky, because of this revolution, came back to the Russia and taught his students the methods of expressing his thoughts about the freedom, about their emotions and the way how they see their life. So it's also worth mentioning about the Kandinsky's contribution to politics, economics and social lives uh, because his involvement in the Russian Revolution and the development of other Soviet culture programs. And he also served as a member of the People's Commissariat for 
Enlightenment, which was responsible for the development of culture and educational programs in the Soviet Union. So, Azimjan, what do you think about his work, Delicate Tension? His work, Delicate Tension, this plays, uh, plays a huge role in the development of abstract art in general, I could say. And even more, I can tell you that the delicate tangents, vibrant colors, the shapes, line, the way it was drawn by Kandinsky. It attracts a lot of attention even today, although it was drawn in early 1930s and people are quite interested in his works they visit the museums every year in search of Kandinsky the Kandinsky in his works looking for deep meaning he wants to take insights and he wants to go deep into human conscious without having context about Kandinsky about who he was I think it is quite challenging to get what Kandinsky wants to say because his work is abstract as we say as the saying goes it's difficult to understand it does not make any sense at first but when you listen to it when you play a background music and you can see that there is deep meaning in Kandinsky's work delicate tension in itself it examines and it illustrates the way human conscious works and it's a stunning work of art that showcases Kandinsky's unique vision and talent as a painter. It was created in, as I told, in 1920s. Uh, the painting is usually there, you can see the right of color as we call it. He is using bold strokes, shapes that seem to dance across the canvas. The colors are so bright and vibrant with shades of blue, red, yellow and green. And it's almost like becoming alive. It's coming to life to tell you something about it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially the frenzied energy of the paintings. There is also a sense of delicate tension that rushes throughout, runs throughout it. The shapes and lines seem to be in a state of constant flux, moving and shifting in an intricate dance that's both chaotic at the same time you know there is no order in the painting but at the same time it seems like it's controlled in some sense this is what kandinsky is all about his work the way he paints the abstract art how it's displaced in the displayed in public places it's so compelling it is so eye-catching and and as a great work that was painted by Vasily Kandinsky composition 8 and Amira I mean it would be really lovely for you to talk about Kandinsky's composition 8 because you know more about it because you have seen it in real life when you were visiting Guggenheim Museum yeah. in New York I mean uh, yeah uh, you would be a great person to talk about, Amira. What do you think? Thank you, thank you, Azim John, for believing me uh, about my views of the Kandinsky's art. So, it was a really nice experience for me because my father gave me the opportunity uh, to visit the USA and, of course, to uh, embrace their culture and especially the art. And he gave me opportunity to he, uh, saw he. Kandinsky's paintings in the museum uh, of Solomon Guggenheim and also it's located in New York and two compositions that are situated is the delicate tensions that you described and also the composition 8 of Kandinsky that I will talk about so it was created in the date where the delicate tension was also made so going back so it does not represent the traditional forms of art it represents the uh, outgoing boundaries it has a complex arrangement of geometric shapes lines colors that arrange in the ways that creates a sense of movement and depth it uh we can say that this art also the seek of people's attention because the deep you see the the picture 
it's uh, create the sense of moving so the artwork is also is uh, made uh, use the vibrant colors including red yellow blue green and create a sense of energy and dynamism and also kandinsky believed that abstract art could communicate spiritual and emotional ideas in a way that representational art could not so it's that's why the composition aids brought this idea and this message to people. And um, Azimjo, do you think that all Kandinsky is wanted people to bring the people attention in his art works? Not necessarily, because we can see that Kandinsky is searching for deep meanings, as I've mentioned earlier. He is like searching for insights and he's going deep into human conscious he's trying to explore it and he's trying to evoke some feelings this is the main idea of abstract art however when you see kandinsky's works i mean the original ones in guggenheim museum when you're listening to some music in the background let's say the music of 30 some classic or when you're listening to chopin you can experience different feelings but some people you know call it very ugly they do not call it art but however it is art it is the high form of art for some people this reminds me of the debate that aristotle and plato had about exclusive and inclusive art that we learned during the semester and what else i can say about about that part is that uh, abstract art became a thing in 1930s in 1920s thanks to many painters like of Vasily Kandinsky who contributed a lot to the development of art but there are still some controversial views on his works especially the ones that we mentioned the delicate tension and composition aid because but we can uh, compare these two artworks by saying that the too, was created with the message of the abstract and also they have the same ideas and emotions so that people can kind away of from it and in terms of style and techniques both paintings reflect the Kandinsky's interest in abstract art and exploration of color forms as means of the expression however delicate tension is more dynamic and expressive with the bold lines and vibrant colors conveying a sense of movement and energy Composition aid, on the other hand, is more restrained and competitive, with structured composition and muted colors suggesting a sense of order and stability. So, let's draw the conclusion. As we said, that Vasily Kadinsky is a representative of the abstract art uh, that always wanted to show and express the deep emotions uh, of the people and himself, and also about his life, how the Re Russian Revolution and other Soviet programs inspired him to create it. And also um, he, the vibrant colors, shapes, lines, the meaning of his artwork that delicate tension and composition aid brings. What do you think about it? As the Russian saying goes, he was uh, as the saying goes, he was strange to his own people, to Russian people, because he came from very rich, very affluent family. When the revolution happened, he, this served as a, a claim on him. It was like, it was like very hard for him, you know. Then he had to flee to Germany. And in Germany, Nazi regime came to power, as we know, in 1930s. And Kandinsky couldn't take it. He was a very delicate man, as we mentioned. Delicate tension. He was a gentleman. And he couldn't take how these atrocities are being done by German government, the Hitler regime. And Kandinsky had to flee to France, where he died in 1944. And it's so tragic, you know because he, he, his whole life Kandinsky searched for some meaning and human conscious and his works are so impressive at least to us it seems so we don't know maybe some people would call it kitschy but for me it's not kitschy at all it is the high form of art which can bring people together which can delve into people's subconscious and yeah you know evoke some deep feelings 
and uh, this is a really great and beautiful works i would recommend everyone to visit somehow i would suggest you to visit the in new york the i have new been york. there actually yeah, yeah 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 i have been there i've seen with my own eyes it is such a beauty and thanks everyone for listening to us thank you Azinja. thank you for our thank you. thank you thank you amira